I remember being a kid. I can see that happening. That's oh, always, always something to do. The Unlaced. Unlaced podcast. It's actually not bad. <laughs> and we're live. We are back, people, on the Unlaced podcast. Uh, we're in some new digs today, Eth. We like this place at the Commons, the cool little podcast studio they've got. So um, we're going to be bringing you all our future podcasts from here. And definitely for those that have been tuning in and subscribing and giving us a lot of support over the last few episodes. We appreciate it. All of the people on TikTok and Instagram, um, you guys are the best sharing all our content. And for those who haven't tuned in to any episodes this year, do go back and check them. We've done some with the Melbourne Storm, uh, with Tommy Bug, with the inspirational Liam Toomey as well, and they've all been really good episodes. So um, this has been a man that I've wanted to get on for a while. He's the elusive man, the elusive winger, the Tunisian Messi, as they call him. <laughs> And he gets embarrassed when I say that, but that is definitely what they were calling him when he first came to the A-League. But it's the great Fahid Ben Kalfala. Fahid, Hi, bro. good man. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Bro, now you've got a, a crazy life, but um, you're actually going to America tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, I watch basketball. Watch easy. basketball. Talking, not, talking to the mic. Yeah, not just right. doing basketball because I'm also getting some meetings everything that's the main thing but yeah yeah taking advantage and going to a couple of watchable basketball games basketball you love basketball we just literally spoke for 10 minutes about it. I'm like fuck man I hadn't even planned to speak about this in this podcast but we should I do to be honest like yeah it's a yeah I would say it's the best sport man best center do you it's, have it's a, amazing do you have a team you go for Golden State Golden State yeah. me too actually yeah uh, you told me last time yeah, yeah but only because that's the only NBA team Why, did you did you started following did no. you start following them when they were winning? I did, yeah. but I, <laughs> no, because I went to San Fran whilst they were good, and then I went to the Oracle Arena, and then the, I went a year later and I went to the no, Chase Center. It's, it's crazy, sick. man. It's sick, to be honest. Like, but every a, any team, like this, what they make with basketball, like you can even go to a bad game. It's just amazing. Yeah, like the way they, like the halftime, well, as soon as there's a stop, man, yeah. it's just sick. Everything they do, but yeah, it's I love it. I yeah, the way they um the way they bring the crowd in, like the kiss cam or the it's a show. It's yeah, it's, it's a, like everything they do, like to be honest, the people they bring, like singers, everything. Especially like look, there's a difference between play of games and play of games and um and like the regular season. Yeah, but yeah, it's nothing better to be honest. For me as a sport, look, there's nothing better. Who do you um who do you think is going to be the top seed in the West in the East this year? Uh West, look, I hope Golden State. Yeah. Um, they're close, aren't they? They're, they're close. They top three. I think, I think the Suns. Like, I think they'll catch. Like then they're playing finals. Yeah. Uh, depending on if uh, Draymond Green gets gets back from injury for Golden State. Yeah. The East is wild, man. Like yeah, so East many good crazy. players. So we'll see with the Nets. Like uh, if uh, KD and Ben Simmons <laughs> come back, like all together, they're loaded. Like they don't. I don't think there's a better team. If it's if it matches, I think they can win it all. But. So yeah, yeah, it was now hard on everything. 76, man. It's, it's, well, yeah. the Nets are Anyone can beat it. Like, it's the Heat, heat uh, Bulls, nah, the top Bulls everything, man. It's it's crazy. But that's one of the things, like, in NBA, it's, uh, there's so many good teams and players, and uh, it's just just a different sport, to be honest. What was your... um? Because we obviously... Ben Simmons, Australian, everyone loves him. <laughs> but, like, you've probably got less of a bias because you've come from France, even though you're now probably Australian, your daughter's Australian and so forth. Yeah. But... Like, what's your unbiased view of that situation of him at the 76ers oh, and then obviously I the think, Brooklyn trade? I think it's, look, I think it's disrespectful what, he, <laughs> what he's done. I think it's bullshit because you don't accept people saying you're soft or because he got crit criticized. It's just because the coach said, I don't know if I can win with yeah. him or whatever. Yeah. Man, if you have balls or something, you go there and you show him he's wrong. Yeah. But it's just whatever. Look, mental health is a big issue. But using that, but is that what is that what that's they, what he said? But I don't right. know if it's true or something. I don't maybe maybe not. But it's just like yeah, the guy didn't want to play, and you can't do that. And especially then you want to get your money, and the money is getting paid. It's yeah. just ridiculous. So he, he deserves it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think it was disrespectful to Venice to do that kind of stuff. So just yeah. because not you don't want to be criticized or something. So man, do something else. Bro, can you imagine? like in your days playing <laughs> playing football at the highest level and turning up to training in tracksuit pants and your phone iphone yeah, in your pocket bro, running bro. like plays bro like fuck i don't I, to be honest like to that's a thing like i know it's 
like new generation and everyone like is on TikTok, Instagram and all that stuff. But it, look, in America, it's very different. Like the way they behave on court, off court, we can't do that in football. Like no. even now, for example, the way they get dressed before games, everything, like it's just a show. So I love it. I love that kind of stuff. Like you see on the bench, the way they react, someone like gets smashed on or get done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like they let you live your life. Yeah. And I think it's probably like the mentality there. Do you think that's better for sport or do you think it's because from our background, I'm, I'm kind it's of, hard to I'm kind to. of old school, to, old school about that. Yeah. I think you, for me, there's rules you have to follow and, and you need to focus. But look, the man, they can go out, they can go to Vegas the following day. Like the yeah. best player who ever played the game, Michael Jordan, <laughs> was probably the worst example. The yeah. guy could not sleep like the whole night and the following day he was going then which he's gonna, he would have scored 50 you no know, I never knew that about him you know yeah, like he's he was a guy like, like we would smoke a cigar before the game or whatever he would do <laughs> things like that but he can like I was in France when Ronaldinho was playing and yeah. and he's the type of guy like he's got that reputation to go out like almost every night and it's always the same like could would you say something to a player yeah. if he's good on the pitch yeah. And if I have a player, man, and if he wants to go out, go. But you know, on the long term, it might not work. Yeah. But in basketball, it's probably different. They play every day. So yeah, I think it's, games, it's also right? look a different mentality. In football, it, it doesn't work like that. No, so it's, it's very impossible. different. And yeah, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it would be very, very Bro, tough. you know, I heard this story. This is why I said this about Michael Jordan. I heard this story the other day. It was like, the, there's a, I don't know, he's, he must be very um, well off and well known in the corporate space. And he was friends with Michael Jordan. You know how Michael Jordan, like a big gambler. Yeah. So they played 18 holes. And I think this was the day of a game or the day before. Either or, the story's still fucked. But I'm pretty sure it was the day of the game. They played 18 holes and they played for a huge sum of money. And this guy beat Michael Jordan over 18 holes. And while they're playing, they're like, they're drinking Bud Lights. They're drinking beer. And it got to the end of their game and Michael's like, um, he's like double or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so they played again. They played another 18 holes. So he played 36 holes. The guy goes, the guy goes, um, we were drinking the whole way through. He goes, I beat him again. And um, then Michael, because like he drank like fucking 20 beers or something like throughout the game, like Bud Lights, but still he drank. And <laughs> he goes, um, I can't remember who he was playing. He was playing someone um, in the East. And, and he goes to Michael, he's like, oh, like I'll, I'll bet money you, you, like, you, you guys won't win or you won't score over 20, 20 points or 25 points. And Michael goes, all right, like you're on. The guy went and dropped like 50 points. Yeah. After nah. having fucking 20 Bud Lights and playing 36 Bro, if holes you look of golf. At, like even there's a documentary now, uh, there's a documentary on um, Paramount and um, about like the, um, the dream team. And like before he played the final, actually he actually didn't sleep the whole night playing cards, everything. In the, 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 the Olympics. Yeah. And, and, and then so like he had to do, no, nah, but so because the, the guy was just like, yeah, but he used to do that. Even oh, like when man. he played finals, like the guy was going to the casino, gambling, everything, coming back, smoking cigars. And, but <laughs> man, he, he was just, and that's why he was just much better. Yeah. You can't say anything. To, yeah. If tomorrow you're like you're coaching and the guy wants to go out because that's what makes him happy, you gotta accept that. Yeah. And that's where I think like we need probably to change like, the, like you know, the mentality in football because like we have rules, we respect that. Everyone's gotta like, you know, you travel, everyone has to go to bed at the same time, blah, blah, whatever. But man, if you have someone who's, <laughs> you know, he's gonna perform, <laughs> let him do his things. Yeah. So it's tough, but I think that's just men management. Yeah. But man, you can't say anything to I, someone. I know, well, whatever. and then he does that. It's like, he, but yeah. it's hard to relate to as an athlete. And that's that's exactly why for us, soccer player, it's very different because- You can't do that. Nah, because it's, it's a different sport, but I, I, I think to be honest today, like, even when I was coaching, I was saying to play, man, it makes you happy to go out. Yeah. Just go. But yeah. make sure tomorrow you come and you perform because if you don't, <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to I'm going to destroy yeah. you. So that's the thing. Like it's, uh, you give them something, but they have to give you something back. Did you ever play with players that were good at that? Like they could do well, both? There's one story, man. Like one, uh, my first year, uh, I signed for Caen in first division. That was my first year in first division. So I got transferred from a second this class. Is league, is it, what are you called? I league was, one. Yeah, it's a top one, flight. Yeah. So I was in second division playing for Angers. And that week I got transferred to Caen in League One. And there's a, there's a striker. Um, 
man he was he was top like a top striker but he used to play in amateur level his name was steve sabino he used to play in amateur level but he used to go out everything because he used to enjoy life that was his life like he was like the guy was actually cleaning things for the city the beans all that stuff and he got lucky and not lucky he obviously worked and he made it so for him it was just like i want to enjoy my life i want to play at the highest level but i want to enjoy my life anyway that week we're going training everything and i'm staying at the hotel he's staying at the hotel and we knew a bit each other so we used to go like restaurants every time together and the day before the game he said oh let's go let's go <laughs> let's go eat and oh, i said no nah, yeah. and game. i said no nah, <laughs> nah, we're staying we're staying here we're staying at the hotel everything like just to eat there like to be serious and we played at home so we were just together because we obviously like we just moved from another club and he's like now nah, let's let's go to a city as usual or whatever. I said, oh man, we've got a game tomorrow. I said, nah, don't worry, man, let's go, whatever. And I was like, all right, well, <laughs> he's, yeah. got, he's got a Porsche. Your arm's everything. easy to twist. He's, he's got a Porsche. He drives everything. We get there. So we're having dinner. And he said, oh, let's go. Like, so 10 p.m. or something, we finish eating. And he said, oh, let, let's go have a drink. I said, nah. He said, oh, um, whatever, a striker, Lilian, he's coming. And the guy comes, whatever. I said, no, man, like, man, we've got a game tomorrow. He said, man, Dory, the coach is coming as well. I said, what? Your coach? Yeah, and I was like, no, nah, man. I, I, mean, I said, man, give me your <laughs> keys. Now. Man, give me your keys. I'm going I'm going back to the hotel. That was my first game, professional level. Like, oh, in, in so you one. didn't like, okay, so it's And I was like, man, you, right? I'm just, uh, well, I, even I've never went out before a game or something. Yeah, you go out sometimes after, but you wouldn't after, go out before. After, yeah, but never before. So I was like, man, I said, oh, I'll take my keys, everything. I said, man, I'm going back home, well, going back to the hotel. Bro, at 4 a.m., someone is knocking on the door yelling like he used to call me black terrorist and bro like someone knocking on the door like crazy 4 a.m i wake up bro he's got like red eyes sweating oh. shirt op open shirt everything and i'm like what the fuck bro what are you doing he said bro i'm scoring free course tomorrow <laughs> and i'm like man he he's can't on run. a different world bro he can't anyway we wake up, we're going to the stadium to have uh, a lunch all together. And bro, he's fine. Like you can see, like he's fine. You can't see nothing. Anyway, we're going back to the hotel, everything after with the team to have like siesta, nap, everything, blah, blah. Bro, he scored three goals. <laughs> he scored, he's bro, he scored three goals. Best man, best player on the pitch, everything. And I was like, man, he's on a different planet. And then, so we became friends and he used to go out like two days before the game, sometimes a day before the game, but that what it made him happy. He needed that. And so, but as soon as like, you know how it is, you don't score, people start criticizing your lifestyle or what you do anyway. But bro, that was, he was like that. And then he played for the French national team. No but someone, way. what he was doing, <laughs> bro, you sometimes you're coming back, you got to run, he's like running like no one else. But he was like a machine. But that was his life. That's and, crazy. And so for him, it's normal. For him, it was normal. But because he wanted that, he needed that. If you could tell him, if you told him like, nah, man, you got to stay here, he would have said, nah. It's so I think everyone is different. Me, I wouldn't be able to do that. I don't think I would. Uh, be. I, to be honest, I, I can't. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, you you have three or four players like that, look, man. But then on the long term, it sounds it's going to catch You know up. what? It's going to catch you, I think. Like, so those guys retire at like 31. Yeah, he actually maybe. had a heart issue. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry nah, to laugh. Like, yeah, fuck, well. He actually, to be honest, he got transferred that year to Monaco. Wow, that's a big and transfer. Yeah, he got transferred everything. And when he did the medical, they find like he had a heart issue, oh, like everything. A so he had, yeah, so he actually uh, had to stop playing. Everything. That's not probably because of drinking. That's like, no, 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 that's it's probably something, whatever. But then people started saying oh if you had like you know uh, a good like uh, whatever lifestyle everything maybe he would it help more i don't yeah. know i don't know about that but so common it right was like yeah Fuck so it but enough. it happens man you see that to every club and sometimes you just wonder like man how can they do that I know. and you've got the one they want to go out and <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> and man. there's plastics on the pitch <laughs> they can't even run or nothing <laughs> so, man, you would definitely should stop <laughs> no, them, I know, that's the worst part so. the guys that are trying to be pros and can't play but um <laughs> people don't know like obviously you had an unbelievable career which we're going to go into and people here know you most for obviously melbourne victory but um, like your French career was unbelievable, but now more so. Like I don't think many people know what you do off the field, and yeah. like <laughs> it's funny we laugh about these all the time because. No, but I stay. I don't. To you stay silent. Yeah, you stay but like because because a lot of people and I, I, it's not criticizing. When you finish your career, 
and for example you people talk about you or you're famous everything even here like in australia it's a bit different because soccer is not like massive but you're on tv people talk about you they recognize you blah blah but when you stop people still want to be in the light some yeah. of them they want to do things or stupid things so people can talk about them yeah. for me i was like i stop i don't want anyone to talk about me yeah. i don't have any social media why though because i was a bit like that it's too, just because to be honest i don't i don't care i don't give a shit to be honest about that stuff whatever people talk because i know what i've done in my career i yeah. know what i've done and i know how i am as a person i've got my friends everything i'm happy like that and even now for example like uh people ask me like yeah i was coaching a club in npl people they, man heaps of people didn't even know that so and i've never talked about that and didn't say anything uh and now for example i work with my agent and we try to get a couple of players and work here like i'm trying to work here and try to help but your players. work here is unbelievable but you can't man. say anything no i'm not gonna say <laughs> i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say what's going no, on but right? because but i can't because that's because people they need they need to I don't know. I don't know how I can explain that, but sometimes I need to say, "Oh, he's good." Or I don't care if people talk yeah, about yeah. me. I don't need that. I know what I can do, so I don't need people to say, "Oh, Faid can do that for you, man," or whatever. Nah, for me, it's I do my job. Yeah. I don't need people, whatever, to say, "Oh, man, he, you should probably, yeah, fuck, man, Faid is good. Maybe we can talk about him." Doesn't nah, matter. Yeah, yeah. My I agent know. is the best example, man. He had, he's got massive players. People like he doesn't say a word, and and people obviously know him. But he's never on media, never says anything, never talks to the press or whatever. And he's massive. Yeah. He's like a brother to me or something, but what's the point? Yeah, well, I there's no point. Good, You'd rather like, be a good yeah. agent than a known agent. For me, agent. What, what you, when you're good, like, yeah, and, and I don't have social media, which sometimes is probably good as well because I would be saying something stupid. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I wanted you on this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, but sometimes you've got people that have no credibility and they talk about football. That yeah. pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That really, really pisses me off. I think that's off. the one thing that I reckon would piss you off the most is that people who don't know football and to I having a that. strong opinion. You can, you can, everyone is entitled to his opinion, mm. but it's the same, you know. Look, for example, I bought my place. I'll give you an example in real estate. All right, I've got, I own my place, I bought a couple of places or something. But if I'm going to talk to a real estate agent, doesn't yeah. mean because I bought a place or whatever, then <laughs> I know better than him. Yeah. And that's the same thing in football. It's, if you never played at the highest level, you don't know what it is. You, yeah. you can't have an idea about that. So you can talk about football, you understand things, whatever, but when it comes to the highest level, if you haven't played, then it's bullshit. And people always say, oh, yeah, talk about Ferguson or Mourinho have never played. Well, they've always been involved in football for years and years and years. And those people, like they're manager, like managers, yeah. they're very good at. But that one thing that pisses me off here, like it's in Australia, is the coaches with juniors. Mm. And man, you go to the park and bro, like you see some of them, they don't even know how to coach. They don't even, they can't even teach the kid. And because they put a park or jersey or whatever, <laughs> victory city, everything, they take advantage of that. Yeah. So I've, I've coached they for them. They charge so much money they too. They, but bro, they can't even coach. And yeah. They take advantage of people, yeah. and that, and then they said, "Oh yeah, but I coach there, or whatever." Man, you sh sh just shut up, man. You don't yeah. know nothing about that, and that pisses me off. That's what I wanted to ask you about, like, because it's it's amazing, right? And I'm not going to say what's going on behind the scenes, but you're obviously now tapping into the football agency <coughs> space. If no one picked that up. But the di like your phone, it's funny because you're working with all the European agents, particularly the French football, or yeah. your connections in French football. <laughs> your phone rings from like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> so I see you through the day. I'm like, what are you doing, man? It looks like you're on for a run. You're walking a dog. You're chilling out. And the next <laughs> thing you know, you've got all your phone just ringing. But the deal's like you're bringing to some of these kids in Australia or potential yeah, well, conversations. There's, 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 there's like it's pretty crazy like, man yeah, for some of the of them quality we've, we've of the kids or well, not the quality because they can play but like they haven't really done a heap no nah, but y that's where you got to look at the potential and for me my my job is to help the kids if i can give them a chance to go to europe because there's nothing better mm. and i know the football i've played everything so i can help them and not teach them or something but i can help them if i watch a game i can tell them like yes yeah, i've been doing that it's wrong it's bad that you need to improve in that because I've played and I know that. That's one of the thing no one, no, a lot of people can't do that. That's the first thing. And then it's about my connection. Obviously I work with my agent, he's, he's massive uh, in France, in Europe. He can help me, but, but the players, you need to make sure like they're good because I will never try to sell someone 
or to to lie because then that's my reputation. Mm. If I'm gonna tell you, oh, look, this player, whatever, he's good. He comes and he can't play. You're gonna look at me and say, man, he's an yeah, idiot. Won't pick you're up an idiot, phone call. man. Next, that's why. <coughs> and I would never do that. Yeah. So I want to work with specific players, the one I really want to pick. If someone asks me for help or something, I would try, but I'm I would never put my reputation online for that. Yeah. Uh, if I believe in the young players, I would definitely do it. But because I, be- I believe that. And then when I speak to clubs in Fran- like in France or whatever, the majority of the people I played with, some of my friends, like they're in charge now of, as a technical director, coaches, everything. Okay. So in, in France, I would say, except for two or three clubs, I can get access to almost everyone. Wow. And so I can pick up my phone, ring coaches or whatever, and they will pick up and it's easy. But then it's, look, I think this kid is really good. Look at him and you tell me what you think. And yeah. if they, they think he's good, then they call me back and we try to make it work. If they say, nah, look, man, we don't like him, that's fine. I'm not going to try to force uh, because there's no point. If mm. a coach doesn't want you, man, don't don't send a kid there. If a coach mm. doesn't want him or something, there's no point. Yeah, you can force, you can try to help and because your reputation or you know what, you know friend, but what's the point? If you know the kid is going to struggle, that's not a lot of agents that just try to put kids everywhere or players everywhere, knowing it's not gonna work, but just to make money. Yeah, and that's not I what that. I want to do. And I, that's one of, to be honest, it's one of the reason why I want to do that because, man, it's, it makes me sick. Yeah, you see, it's just a couple of players, you know, in like sh- whatever shit leagues, and and it's not gonna work. And you yeah. know, the players what they do, what do they do? They come back uh, six months later. Yeah, the majority of the players he, come well, back maj- six months yeah, later, a year later. Hundred percent. But you need to warn them. You need to tell them how hard it is you need to explain to them man and i i tell my players the 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 one i've got and some of them obviously are gonna go to europe i'm not gonna be the agent bringing you back to australia Mm -hmm. you man if you sign three years two years one year whatever man you stay and you gotta work hard because that's uh, it's uh, it's very very hard but if you succeed Man, there's nothing better. But your career is the prime example because you know what? I didn't actually know that your you played second and third division in France until yeah. you're 25. Yeah. Because you played like an incredible level international football. We we spoke yesterday like Europa League as well. Yeah. But you actually didn't break into the first division no. until 25. But I never never went to into academies where in France if you don't go through academies it's very very hard. So I was I was playing like until 18 I was 17, like with amateur clubs. Right. And I was doing really well, whatever. And there's clubs that came to Venice, and I had like clubs like Lille, Paris Saint Germain, everything. They wanted me to come, but to sign with a second team. Mm. And I was like, a coach came from Amiens. He was coaching in second division. He came to my place and he said, Now I want you to train with us. But then it's going to be tough. And I was like, Yeah, that's fine. And I signed there. And but then I had to work. And sometimes, man, it's hard. Like I struggle. Like, we got relegated that uh, one, whatever, in 2005 or six, like in, in third division with my team. Fuck. And a club from Bul- Bulgaria, uh, Lit- Litex Lovek, came. They were playing the Europa League, everything back then. Man, they made, they made me an offer, like really good money. And I was playing in third division. I wasn't on good money. Wow. And I was thinking about it. And I was like, oh, it's going to be massive, everything. And I spoke with my agent. My agent was like, look, you need to understand, you can go there, but you don't know what's going to happen. It might be good, it might be bad. Mm. If you perform in third division, you can go in first division. Like, you know, it's not going to stop you, but you need to believe, blah, blah, whatever. And I stayed and I had a really good season. I went back to second division club, like with a top coach, my mentor now. Uh, and it started like that, but I never quit. I never like, in my mind, I was like, one day with my wife, actually, we went to watch Ren. Uh, Ren. Uh, Rens in were they first division? They were in first division and I was in third. But I w- when I was watching the game, I was like, they're not better. I mm. know I know what I can do and th- some of them are not better than me. And I promised my wife that day, like we were going back and I said, I swear to God, I will play. I, I, I'm going to make it. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, to be honest, I was... That's great. How old were you then when you said I was that? 20, 23 or something. Fuck, so but then I was like, yeah. pushing then. Yeah. So I second then division and third division is still profes- second, is look, it professional leagues? Yeah, we were professional. Second division is really good level. Like, yeah. man, much better than A League, for yeah. example. Yeah. Uh, but it's tough to make it because yeah. there's so many players. And look, you need luck. It's mm. like you need talent or whatever you want to call it. You need to be good, but you need luck. Mm-hmm. And I met that coach in second division. His name is Jean Louis Garcia, who helped me like crazy. Uh, I reached a level with him. Like I was like, yeah, I was really good. And I think I've, that year I finished second best player in second division. Wow. And I got transferred in first division. 
and then like yeah, I must I started. But then it's like yeah, it's um, that's why it's hard, bro. And when people, he has a lifestyle like it's it's amazing, but majority of players don't understand how hard you have to work to make it. What and do you think the um, now you've been here a long time and you you've probably been around like the youth setup uh, enough in Australia, particularly yeah. since it's changed like where it's now focused on the youth teams and the clubs, and you've seen a lot of the junior clubs because you've worked in it. Like, what's the biggest difference between here and Europe? Like, where do we because we have talent here, but I don't think it gets yeah, molded the in the right. Look, uh, and I'm and I'm gonna be very honest, the coaches are not good enough in academies y- in Australia. Australia. Yeah, because first of all, amateur clubs they take a piece. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna keep it simple. There's good clubs trying to do the right things, everything, but the majority of the coaches, they just want to get a bit of money or whatever. You see, you look at the sessions, what they do, oh, it's horrible, bullshit. Man. It's horrible. It's not and even it, fun to train. Yeah, but it, and, and that's one of the things I hate because they just they just go there, whatever, put four cons somewhere and just play. Yeah. Nah, the kids like you need to teach them things how, if, and that's why I always said in Europe we always say the same thing. The best co- best coaches are within with the academy because you need to demonstrate. For example, if you have a 13 years old and he struggles, for example, to cross, you need to show him how he can improve. Yeah. But these, those people, they, don't they never kick the ball. But you know what? Uh, do you know what my opinion is? The coaches here are unbelievable at pretending they know a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, they're amazing. very good at that, no, man. They, do they but come across like they know what they're and doing. So, and, and that's one of the things. So And then they train like twice, sometimes three times, but they will never do f- a lot of things or different things mm. where in the season here, whatever, it's it's like seven months, eight months, and you stop, then you've got the cricket season, mm. everything. Where in France, you play 11 months. Yeah. And you've got so many games, everything, so repetitions. Yeah. Look, it's very expensive sport here. you got to pay uh, 15, yeah. two and a two half, two three, and a half three grand, grand, three grand, grand to play where in Europe. When you're six you have or to seven. play like 100 euro to play the whole year. Yeah, it's bullshit. So, but then at the professional level, I know clubs are trying to do better things with the academy. It's about resources. I think the clubs don't want to spend because yeah. I've always said something. If you have a great academy and if you're not afraid because of the salary cap, everything, and today you can see there's a lot of kids playing, but some of them don't deserve it. It's just because of the salary cap. Mm. So there's a difference because it doesn't doesn't make the level better. But if you have the right, like for example, the right coaches in your academy and you start having developing kids and having 16, 17 years old play, playing in A League, then you can transfer and make money mm. and you put the money back, for example, within the academy or coaches and resources, everything. So, but you need to, you can't be afraid of that. Yeah. And I, I think we have a long way to go mm. to make things better. Today, because of what happened with COVID, the salary cap went down and the TV rights, everything. So you actually have to play kids. Mm. Uh, it's going to give them game time, everything, but you need to change a lot of things to make th- to make it happen. Like, even look, we talk uh, cr- second division, whatever. Fix the A League first before yeah. talking about the second division, Fucking because they say, "Oh, yeah, it's, it's gonna give a chance to the kids." Yeah, but the kids are not good enough. So you need to think about the program, uh, coaches you're gonna put in place, mm. and just to help them because Australia is a great country, and in sport like rugby, uh, cricket, everything they're doing really well. So mm. in soccer, you should be able to do that. Yeah, I agree, man. It's fucking, it's crazy you say that. Because I, th- I think like here we don't get taught the basics well enough. Look, uh, man, we, I've, I've we go straight into like superior skills. But to be honest, in A-League, we, w- I had players with me, like if you ask them to juggle, to mm, do can't. like 50 with like, can't for example, like foot. a left and they can't. Yeah. And and that's that's not normal. That's part of the technical stuff. But if you ask a player, for example, to kick the ball with his left foot, then he can't because we, I think we, a lot of clubs try just to make robots mm. and, you know, which is which is really bad, and yeah, it's uh, they need to change a lot of things. They need to look. Even today, you talk about you know the soccer rules, everything. It's not working. It doesn't work. But it's just I think a, a lack of quality yeah. at one point. And you need to they need to change a lot of things. But it's a long term program, and every time they just think about a short term, and that's mm. why it's not working. They yeah. always think like yeah, we need to do that one year, two years, man. All the kids, like 11 years old, 10 years old, everything, they need to, to, to do things better. But, man, in, you, you know in NPL, better than me, like there's so much politics and having <laughs> friends and like having just people or whatever trying to sponsor the team, everything, their coaches, mm. and they're just rubbish. Yeah. So I, I think we fucked up not keeping the AIS, man. I really yeah. do. Because we attracted the, the quality of coaching there was good. And to be honest, even though it's football's played by so many juniors here, 
the talent pool is not as big and as good as Europe because no, we don't not. have the quality of coaching. It's not, but but so you, you put them all in the one. Yeah, fuck, but you should have better. you should have better players. And like when you had that, a lot of players actually played in A League after they made it. Every single, almost every single. That's one. why. So it's and so it's it it definitely helped. Mm. Um, but today it's like, look, the country is so big, and I've always said the same thing. If you, if you're Melbourne Victory, for example. Um, and the best 15 years old plays for Perth in amateur, you should be able to go and, and sign him. But yeah. they don't. Yeah. Because you don't have the accommodation, facilities, everything to do that, like mm -hmm. resources. So you need to be able to look after him for schools. So that's, you just focus, for example, on uh, the CBD, whatever, mm -hmm. here yeah. around the CBD, Smaller whatever. Talent pool. You're not going to get anything. So those clubs, for example, like it's so far away. If it's in Perth, like you got to explain like, oh, four and a half hours flight or whatever <laughs> for the parents, <laughs> we're going to look after your kids. But that's what they do in Europe. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's hard because they just focus on one or two things. If I was, look, it, it, it's all, it comes to money. But there's a couple of clubs like City, Victory, Sydney FC, Western Sydney, Western United. To, uh, to they can afford that today. Mm. You know, there's they the one like, you know, they can probably, they have, the they, they have money, they have people behind, they can support that and try to lead to things better. It's just the way after you want to spend the money and but you you need to do to change things man to make things better yeah i agree well, i want to talk to you about like the quality of french football because you obviously started in the lower ranks but then when you got recognized and you went to Cannes uh <coughs> when you were 25 and then what was the club after called Bordeaux. i played oh, no valencian valencian yeah but now i want to talk about valencian because you got signed from there to bordeaux for yeah. five million euros i think it was in 2009 2010 Tent, uh, yeah which I think back then is a big fee for a club yeah. for, uh, for a player from that club, yeah. right? It was because I and Bordeaux is like, like at the time. I think Bordeaux was like uh, in I and out like of Champions League. No, nah, it was like yeah, top top three in France back yeah, then. Yeah, when was Gokouf there? He, Jan Gokouf. So actually, he got transferred and I took his place. Wow, he was so their best player. <laughs> was, I used yeah. to watch him play in the Champions was, League all the time. He was amazing. He was amazing. But that such a good set piece was taker. Just look, they're struggling this year, and to be honest, I hope they're gonna remain because they're struggling. Mm. Uh, they had a lot of issues the last two or three years, whatever, uh, finance and president, everything. Um, it's a massive club. You know, back then, I think the pl the teams that I knew more, I didn't know, P I mean, PSG I knew of, but the teams that were playing Champions League more regularly was Lyon and Bordeaux. Yeah, Bordeaux, yeah. yeah. Those and Bordeaux maybe Marseille Bordeaux, sometimes. Bordeaux, I think in 2009, they, pe they played the Champions League quarterfinal against Lyon. Okay. And they beat, like, Bayern Munich, they beat Juventus. They were they a had good an team, amazing man. Team. Um, it's such a big club. What's the what was the level like of like because we oh, could amazing to be honest. Like look, even in Valenciennes, I, I had a great season. I think I've, I scored like nine or ten goals, and I scored. And I think in assist, I think I think it's second second in assist in France that year. I think yeah, I, was was a, I saw a statistics. I think like Lucio Gonzalez, who was in Marseille, oh, was he? He's a good player. Uh, he finished first, and I finished second. Fuck. And so I got transferred to Bordeaux, but even at training, like it's we were probably like. 19 international players wow so the level the quality of his trainings was i was just on a different level and it's, you know you see someone get injured man they don't stop yeah you know and <laughs> like you just wait for the physio to man they don't stop they keep playing because really? there's no friendship yeah and that's one of the things i i learned there is like people try take you try want to take your spot so you can have one or two friends or whatever but Man, they don't care. If you They'll get injured, you, you know out. what? Man, if if you're injured, they're gonna be happy because that that's your li like you make yeah. your living and you need to you, you wanna make money and you wanna sign for big clubs and you're ambitious, everything, and so you wanna play for your national team. So it's like you, training is a war, like small games, everything. Mm. It's just different. You do a soccer tennis, man, you don't wanna lose. And yeah. you get upset. And that's I've always been like that. But yeah. when I signed for Bordeaux, I've I've learned that and Look, having obviously a lot of international players, like we had probably four players playing for the French national team, players playing for Brazil, um, like uh, Czech Republic, everything. Man, we had an amazing team. Uh, the club was like massive. It was an amazing, amazing yeah. experience. How did the <coughs> how did the move come to Australia? Like, did you even know we had a league? Nah, to be honest, my agent. So <laughs> I went. I, I had enough to be honest of France and and the Europe, everything. And I was like, look, I just I want something different. Um, and you, whatever I had offer from Turkey, everything I said, look, I, I would love to have like to go to a country where I can learn English, even for my family, everything would be would be helpful. Um, and we had offer from Greece, I said, nah, uh, blah blah. And he called me once. He said, oh, I've got an offer. They speak English, 
but it's uh, it's a bit far. And I thought about MLS, and he said, oh, it's in Australia. And to be honest, I was like, man, I didn't even know they played soccer. I was like, no, nah, <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, yeah, why not? And to be honest, like he said about, look, it's Melbourne victory. I looked quickly. So I said, look, uh, let's, let me talk to my wife. I'll come back to you. My wife was like, yeah, well, you wanted to learn English, everything. So yeah, just let's go. How old were you at this point? 31, 32? 31, 31, yeah. So you, I'm you're 32. You, so your first season was at 32? Yeah. yeah. That's fucking amazing. And man. I was like, and now you're but I call young. him and I, I call him back. I said, yeah, all right. All right. Uh, arrange a phone call, everything. Get me the coach. Or was it with Musky at the time? Musky, but because I couldn't speak English, uh, Jean-Paul de Marini, like he's, ah, okay. he's Mauritius, so he could speak he French. Assistant. So he was translating and we spoke and he was like, um, oh, look, we want you to come, blah, blah. I said, yeah, right, no problem. And to be honest, I checked quickly after. So I, asked, I called my agent back. I said, what's the club, by the way? He said, oh, Victory. I said, Victory. He said, where? He said, oh, I think it's in Melbourne. Anyway, I looked at online and like says Amy Park. And I was like, oh, no way they're playing there. Like, you know, I was like, yeah, no, nah, no way. Well, you thought it'd be a shit stadium I, or something? Because Amy I Park like, beautiful, right? I thought like, we are going to play like in front of 500 people. <laughs> I swear about that. I swear about that. And when I first came, my first game was against um, Western... Well, Wanderers, yeah, fucking. Wanderers. They had big crowds, man. When it was first. in Melbourne, we played at um, at Etihad, and like there they had big bro, traveling we had like, fans. We had like forty five or forty six thousand. Fuck you! I was like, that's what is sick, this? bro. I was yeah. like, ah, oh, that's sick. Yeah, and I loved it. I loved every moment after that. Yeah, it was hard. The training and everything, like mentally, was a bit tough. Just to get used to the level or like get the used style? to the style. Everything was different. Training is like here, like in with the salary cap. So you've got good players and some players like yeah, they're, they're young and they, they don't have the level, but just because of the squad. Uh, training was like, but then to be honest, I loved it. I was like, uh, look, don't get me wrong. There's nothing compared to Europe. But yeah. at my age, uh, coming here with my it's family and league, things yeah. like I could do, like my, I remember my daughter, so we went to <laughs> we went to the beach and for the first time we could enjoy time at the beach without having someone coming to me and asking for a signature. Oh. So because in Bordeaux, like once we went to the beach and like for like thirty minutes we had people just like fans, everything coming. And in France, man, they're not that respectful. Bro. They, come, <laughs> they don't care if you're playing. They just come. They want to take a picture. They yeah, take you, off. whatever. If you play or something. <laughs> and I uh, and so we got here and bro, I was like, oh, I can have a normal life. Like things like yeah. I couldn't do in France, yeah. like with my family and the fans, like obviously, man, Victory, like it's such a really good club, like family club. Yeah. But the fans were amazing. I loved, seriously, I loved every moment. I don't think My first year was amazing. I think we, we've spoken of this before because the year before you came was my last year in the A-League. Yeah. And I, I genuinely think, I'm not being biased, but I genuinely think that the league was at its highest level of quality yeah, uh, My first through year, that period. Uh, my, f- my first year, to be honest, I think the level was kind of like a second division in France. Like, uh, yeah, probably. To be honest, like the best teams, like Sydney FC, us. Um, I, I think the level was good. Anyway, we had good players coming from overseas. Like, you know, they were, they were really good. Like even Yanko, those players, like, you know... Uh, uh, Jacques Fati played in France, yeah. like uh, Dimitri Evich. Fuck, and yeah, and those right. players, to be honest, like, they were good. And my first year was amazing. Like, off the field, on the field, pff, man. I, I think, I, man, I used to, we used to go out after every game. And we obviously, like, well, obviously, no rush, Mahazi, yeah, yeah. Danny <laughs> Georgeski, Jason Gerard. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah the, the, we, I think your best friendships off the field. Yeah, but here, the, huh? the three of them. Like for me, they're like family today. Yeah. To be honest. Like they're like you're all still in touch the same yeah. too, huh? Oh man, that, but what they gave me, because man, I, I came and it was tough to speak another yeah. language. But everyone helped me. Everyone, but those three. So we were always together. Yeah. And Rush teach me, taught me English, English well, huh? better because Georgeski can't even speak <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, him quality. and Jess helped me. Danny was like helped me swearing, so yeah, he yeah, taught me course. that. <laughs> of uh, course. But no, nah, but what I built with them and what I had with them was just amazing. Like you know when you go and train because in France like it was just a bit different because it's it's war. Like, you yeah. go training and you know like you, you n- it's a job but you need to get to your spot. Uh, here was like I know I'm gonna play but I I can do I know I can be good but I can enjoy my life off the field. Something to Venice was a bit tougher in France. Yeah. But I loved it, man. Seriously, you had fucking unbelievable year here. Uh, unbe- unbelievable seasons here. The first I mean, year was amazing because 
Was the we, first year when you won the premiership? No. Yeah. So f- first we, year you we won, won everything. everything. We won the FFA, everything. Fuck. And uh, we had a great team. The bond, like, within the players, everything, man. It was just like the club. Everything, like, I was, I was like, shocked, but in a good way. Mm. And even, like, with my family, like, we were so happy. And I knew, like, to be honest, we had offers. I had offers from a couple of countries, from Asia, and even clubs from mm. A-League and as a marquee player. And we were, now nah, we're going to stay yeah. Like we we just loved it. Your daughter loved it here too, though, oh, didn't she? Lo- that, that's wife, one of the main daughter, reasons you stay. Lo- you've stayed, that was huh? the main reason. Yeah. Because if it, look for me, it's all about family. Yeah. If and I always make decision about my family. So if they told me now we 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 want to leave, I would have said yeah. Because they told me like they were happy, I was like man, that's it. Yeah. There's no point. I'm happy here. Whatever. Yeah, you can make more money. It's fine. But luckily, like you know, I've, I've got a, like, a pretty good career, so it was fine. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to make, I would never make a decision based on money. Otherwise, man, I would have gone to Saudi because I had an offer from Saudi which before coming here. Money. Which was like, yeah, probably uh, we could add like a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. We could add you zero said no. And I said wow. no, nah, because, but first of all, with my wife, I'm not married. So, and then I was like, oh man, I can't take my daughter there. Like in terms of education. <laughs> and look, I don't criticize, bro, because I, I get people when they get to a certain age, they should go and make money because it's a, it's a short career. I was just different. I was like, um, my lifestyle is too important. Yeah. My family is too important for me. It's a so good place to live, man. That's, it's, a, it's a great Pre-COVID place to live. Anyway. Like. <laughs> one, one, hey, one of the funniest things, and this I'm going to let you explain this story, but I'm just going to set the scene because when Fahid came to the A-League, he fucking blew, blew it up. At 32, to be fair, the way you were yeah. moving, you were still moving at like 26, 27. Like you've always been very yeah. athletic. Even now I see you run, I'm like, fuck <laughs> I'm fucking 28, you're running like I should. But... At the time, so I think you won everything. You also won the victory medal. But the year you guys won the championship, so the I can't remember what it's championships that for me is the grand final. Yeah. But the the premiership was obviously the, oh it's the other way around. Championships the league, premierships for the grand yeah. final. So the championship you guys were coming. I think you guys came like third or fourth. I don't know if you come on top. My, f- my first year we won it. And but you you did no no oh, we no, won first and we won everything my first year. Then it was my last year where we finished second and we lost in grand final oh uh, okay but the first year we won everything so no because there's a there's a famous story about you and uh one of the directors having a bet because i think it was just before the finals and you said <laughs> to one of the directors or they said to you either or that if you guys win everything from here on i'll fund or you ask can you fund us to a trip for the end of season to go to vegas yeah and the guy goes, all right, you're on. If you win everything, you win the grand final. Or was Anthony Di Pietro, the chairman. <laughs> was it the nah, chairman? Because, because we, the story is like, obviously they wanted me to stay, but we we didn't have any negotiation. And one day, like we played Western Sydney away. We won like three in Europe. I had three assists. And at the end of the game, like I had a great game, everything. And Tara Rushton came, whatever. She said, oh, Fahid, we want you to stay in Australia, everything. I said, oh, I want to stay. But I don't think like they want to keep me because I haven't started anything. Mm. Anyway, I said, oh, uh, but look, there's other clubs, so I'll be happy to talk with other clubs. Yeah. Anyway, straight away, I got a text message from the chairman. Now nah, we want you to stay. Uh-huh. So, so that week, they started obviously coming with ne- about negotiation. Anyway, financially, like the club, because I couldn't sign marquee player because Milligan and Berisha were marquees. And anyway, financially, it was like, yeah, we need to find an agreement. I'm willing to make an effort to stay here, but at the same time, you need to yeah, do that. Yeah. And I, I spoke with the chairman and I said, all right, I'll stay, and you, but you got to make me a promise. We're going to win it. Mm. And I, I, I was so confident. I said, look, we're going to win it, but you got to promise me you guys <laughs> would get money and you let, you, you'd get everyone to Vegas. <laughs> and he was like, that was a part of the thing. And then he said, he said yes. And to win it, the day we won it, the first thing he came on the pitch crying with his dad and he wanted to hug me and he was like, fight, we want it. I said, chairman, we're going to Vegas. Oh, did he, <laughs> was did he first remember thing the first thing you said? First thing I swear to God, I told him, he remembers that. I told him, I said, we're going to Vegas, everything. Wow. And then the following day, whatever, we started talking about that. And I was like, man, if, if we're not going, I'm leaving. <laughs> This is how nah, you were. Nah, this because, is how you because were if at you, victory. If for me, if you if you make a promise to someone, you gotta you gotta keep it, w- regardless what you do, whatever. For me, it's like if I shake your hand. I know, like now, for example, it's all about yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. For me, you shake my hand. That's it. It's enough. I don't need anything else. But the chairman is like that. To be honest, like don't get me wrong. And anyways, two days later, we had a dinner. We had a lunch. 
uh, in was it South, at the lunch you called him out, or was it was it a pr- so the metal there, night? whatever? I take the microphone. He's yes. talking everything in microphone. I, I said, oh, what about Vegas? <laughs> and he's laughing everything. So now, what about Vegas? Like, no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. Anyway, so straight away after his speech, I'm going to see him. I said, well, no, nah, seriously, no. And he said, look, get tomorrow in the office, everything. We, we talk about that. Wow. And because we had the victory medal, but you know, you have to, f- because, uh, because of the salary cap, you need to, to organize things, auctions, everything, because legally you can't do it. You can't do that. So right. we had to organize right. auctions to get some money from whatever, like you, to get money. And w- yeah, we went. But Shout obviously big with the auction. So I had to sell, for example, my jersey, <coughs> my boots from the grand final, all that stuff. Like, you know, memories you can keep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just to take them. the boys to Vegas oh, but we sold so a lot of stuff like even like someone like Josh Colombaris back then like he helped the club so for us like we went to see him as look can you cook to people like go to people's place whatever so they can buy that so we can make money and to be honest he agreed what everyone a helped what a guy, man, man everyone yeah, everyone, was everyone buzzing helped we won. and so we ended up going to Vegas for like a week and yeah, it was the best trip ever amazing from, yeah, but sort of because hurt. the atmosphere w- between players was, was good. that good so you know it's like going with family, friends, everything, and like you feel like you f- you feel comfortable. But that that year, like yeah, look, man, the chairman, everyone was happy. Yeah, he, shout he out to the chairman, plan. man. Oh, he kept man. his he's, promise. He's That's a great a, person. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a great person. He's he's important for that club. But he's the fact that. you got the funny thing, and what's what I told is that you you got the microphone at an event no, and you like, called him it out. It was in <laughs> a victory medal. A victory it was a victory medal, medal which is the biggest event he, he finished. Of the year. He finished. He, like actually, I got on stage. Like I think was a, a break. I got on stage. I said, "Hey, by the way." So we were you supposed to be on stage? You just nah. stormed on. <laughs> oh my there, god! No, I said, "I got like three thousand people or something <laughs> yesterday." <laughs> Bring you made bought it outside because we're gonna go to Vegas. We need some money, so make sure like yeah, you, you guys auction or whatever. Put some money, and yeah, everyone was great to win. The sponsors, like the, the everyone helped, and nah, it was amazing. It was amazing. This club is. It's a bit special yeah. because there's good people within the club. They're struggling a bit. Too. They've been struggling the last mm. couple of years, but there's a, there's some people that really deserve to be honest. Like you know, it's the best. Yeah, I oh, mean, well said. I tell you what, we're gonna have to get you back on this podcast. I reckon you know what I'm gonna do. I reckon when it gets to playoffs, we'll do an NBA playoff um, podcast. And I think, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. If you're not nah, there, so, no, but you're know. off to America tomorrow to go watch Lakers, yeah. uh, Clippers, and Lakers Golden State. So. Bro, thank you for coming no, on the show, man. Me, man. It's been a pleasure. Next Good to talk to you all day. No, but easy. Um, oh, man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you back on for the for the playoffs one yeah, for sure. Yeah, we will. Easy. All right. No worries, bro. Cheers, brother. Cheers.